my mic, my mic, my mic. <laughs> my mic is good, then we're good. <laughs> That's the church bell. Good morning, and welcome to River of Hope. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. And it's such a beautiful day out there today. And so we just um, want to ask you that if you're in another part of the building, please come to the sanctuary and let's join our hearts together to worship our worthy King this morning. Amen? Amen. Let's stand as I read today's psalm. Churches across the world are on, the, on Psalm 4 this morning. And so let's just stand and prepare our hearts this morning to worship Him. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me. Oh, my just God, you who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine upon us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful ones. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine upon us. O oh Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine upon us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine upon us. Abba, let your face shine upon us this morning. Just open up the heavens and bring your glory down. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. Let's praise the Lord this morning.
glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us, show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us your glory. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us your glory. Show us, show us your glory. You are great and greatly to be praised this morning. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We love our praise to you, Lord. Hallelujah. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. Hallelujah. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and tremble at his force, and tremble at his force. How great, how great. Is our God? Oh, see with me how great is our God, and no, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah! Age to age, He stands. Beginning at the end, beginning at the end, the Godhead, the Godhead, three in one. Oh, Father, Spirit was on the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Oh, name of 
is our God. Let's sing it in different languages of nations in Hebrew. God hello. that all nations will come and worship and bow down. Let the gospel light go out. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From the throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the turn. Let's praise him this morning. Praise the Father. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. to reveal 
will the kingdom come and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you sought to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus, for our sake, you died. Oh, Let's praise him again. Praise the Father. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. God of glory. Majesty. breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who had come to the father on his storm and the church of christ was born then the spirit laid the flame now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel and shall not faint by his blood and in his name in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me let's lift him up again praise the father above the heavens and be exalted here on the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are great.
Give him some high praise this morning. You are worthy. You are worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, before you're seated this morning, just greet someone and just tell them how much you love them this morning. Test. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Nice to see you. So thank you all for joining us in person online. Welcome to the River of Hope Church, and my name is Arthur De La Cruz Lynch, and I'm one of the trustees here at the River of Hope. I have the honor of reading the announcements this morning, but now is the time for children to go with Charlene for the children's hour. That guy's a little enthusiastic. All right, you don't have to run to go there first, though. So let's get started with the announcements. The first announcement is that we need some volunteers. We're looking for weekly and or monthly volunteers to assist Nelson with cleaning the building on Saturday mornings. Any number of hours you can volunteer would be greatly appreciated. And please contact Nelson. Do you mind standing up, Nelson? Well, he's already standing up in the red sweater. Please contact him if you have any questions. The next announcement is we'd like to welcome Modupe's baby girl. So Marupe's husband and big brother, who's two years older, arrived in Minnesota in time to welcome their daughter and little sister, Modupe. And Modupe is an international student sister in Christ who attends River of Hope Church while studying at the University of Minnesota School of Dentistry. Let us congratulate, welcome, and bless this family and new baby by helping with the costly expense of a car seat slash stroller, crib, mattress, and other needs. If you would like to contribute with a personal or collective cash check, money gift card, etc. Please give it to Barbara Federipo. Do you mind standing up? Is she not here this morning? She'll be here this morning. Please uh, contact her to give to Modupe on her behalf. We also like to thank God and you all for his loving gift and welcoming spirit of the river of hope flowing out through you to the world that God has sent to us. If you have questions, please contact Barbara. And the last announcement, I'd, I'd like to please join our, I would like to ask you to please join our neighbors and friends to celebrate Earth Day on Saturday, April 20th, 2024. Each person here can help um, keep pollution from getting into the Mississippi River in our environment. All ages are welcome. It's from 9 to noon. And we'll offer several places to pick up supplies. We'll have gloves, bags and for both recycling and trash, and information about the Environmental Committee. Please refer to the newsletter for more information. At this time, I'd like to uh, invite Yulia to come up and give the second Sunday weekly mission. Is that correct? Mission Spotlight? Here you go. Hello, everyone. So I'm Yulia, and today I'm giving the Mission Spotlight on behalf of CXI, Connections International. And I think that a lot of you already know what is Connections International because a lot of you are already volunteering or participating in our programs. Um, if you don't know about Connections International, there are these brochures that you can find in the lobby and you can look at our website. Or even if you do know about Connections International, you can look at our website to see what are the current programs that are going on. So. Um, I don't have a lot of time to speak, so I'm not going to go through all of the programs of what is our Connections International doing, but I just want to focus on the word Connections International, so what does connection mean, and 
in our world today, there's a lot of um, talk about inclusion, diversity, and these are secular terms. But as part of the body of Christ, we're called to a higher standard than that. That's the connection of love and including people into our, our personal lives and being involved in other people's lives so that that goes beyond that. It's not holding somebody at arm's length and including them, but loving them. So there's many, um, many things I guess I could share about that, but I thought I would just share one story, and this, this isn't about Connections International as an organization, but it's just a story about a connection between an American woman and a Liberian woman. And I think that when I tell this story, it will kind of illustrate the point of what are we aiming for at Connections International. So my mother was, um, you know, she's a white American woman. She didn't have a lot of exposure to people from other countries. I mean, she had some, but not a, not a lot. She went to a church that was 100% white American. And my mom was a very extroverted, friendly type of lady. So you can think of, like, Kim Friesen or something like that. That's how my mom was. So she was given the job to s greet people who were coming into the church. And one day, a lady came visiting the church from Liberia. Her name was Vicky. And my mom was so friendly that Vicky decided that she would make that church her church home. And Vicky had a lot of friends and a lot of family members and a lot of extended family. So they all started coming to the church as well. So the church went to being about 40% Liberian, which was a huge change for the church and also a great change for the church. Well, <clears throat> a lot of the ladies that were around the same age kind of made a, you know, special friendships in the church and time passed and then my mom grew very sick and um, I mean, she was sick for many years and she died. She died in 2014. And my, my dad wanted to have a closed casket at the funeral, meaning no viewing of the body. So I knew that if her friends wanted to see her body before um, the burial, before the funeral, that they would have to come right then that morning uh, of the morning that she died to our house. So I was kind of like making these phone calls of, hey, do you want to come to our house right now? <laughs> this is your last chance. And I don't even remember if I called Vicki or if somebody else called her, but Vicki is one of the ladies that did come to our house. So <clears throat> in our culture, in um, white American culture, we kind of um, hold death a little bit arm's length. Like we have a very short funeral and we, um, we don't get too close to death. And so the ladies from the church, even though I know they were grieving and I know they wanted to comfort me, but they were very hesitant to come into the room with the, with the dead body laying there. And But Vicki, coming from another culture, came right into the room, sat down next to me on another bed, grabbed my arms, grabbed my hands, started crying, started speaking words of comfort and love. So I don't remember what those words were, but it was one of the most um, <clears throat> vivid memories of that day, of that time. So this is an illustration of what can happen when we invite people from other countries into our lives. Sometimes they have something that we need that we don't know that we need. And so this is kind of the um, thing about making connections. There's a lot of people in this church from different cu cultures and we have a great opportunity to get to know each other. And also, this is something that we can do with Connections International because we're reaching out to international students, their families, and immigrants in general. Um, so I'm sure there's probably more that I wanted to say, but I think we'll just watch the three-minute promotional video. And if you have any questions about the organization, you can ask me or you can ask 
Joshua with his arm up over there. <laughs> or, um, you know, Don is here in the front row volunteering, Mark, Zosal, Sarah. Um, so, and many other Debbie, Debbie's back there, Kim. So if you have any questions, you can ask any of those people. So let's just watch the video. CXI is an organization that serves international students and their families. We have online classes, we have in-person classes, activities that would promote relationship, and many classes that help our students adjust to life in Minnesota. Uh, maybe conversation is the most challenging part of uh, American English. Yeah, you need to uh, talk to a real American. We have volunteer teachers from all over the United States and they're very eager to help internationals. So we touch on grammar, sentence structure, vocabulary, idioms, ways that they can express themselves effectively. Teacher all oh, nice. They, they don't sit down there because some teacher will be uh, very uh, serious, but the uh, exact teacher is not so serious. Yeah, I improved so quickly. Students value CXI because there are so many opportunities to build friendships. The web of all the teachers, all the students, they build relationships that can last a very long time. I feel like I have a meaningful relationship even in the online classes. My classmate has already uh, became my friend. We'll watch a segment of the video. Many of the students who come have never heard the gospel message or heard that Jesus loves them and what Christianity means. Maybe God is vicious. So she's like, uh, vision, me, and I'm curious. I just buy it. <laughs> <laughs> the story from Bible, yeah, it brings at me a lot of questions. I started to recognize that the Bible is not only lessons. It also tells people about the nature of, of God. I just wondering why they pray for me. I don't know you and you don't know why you pray for me so kindly. It's just like I'm your sister. I, I just cannot understand. I feel the love fill, uh, fill my heart. So I want to know uh, what you believe makes you so lovely makes you so caring. I want to be the person like you. I feel, okay, yeah, there is a God, <laughs> a real God. And that's what gives me such joy as I see the truth of God being revealed by the Holy Spirit in their lives through the teaching of our classes. It's a success of the CSI group that through them, a lot of people from many different countries where they never, never known about the Bible that they, they pose to, to Jesus. Thank you for putting together that really touching video. I appreciate it. Um, would everybody from CXI, including Yulia, just stand up? We'd like to pray for them. Anybody who's involved with the online classes or mentoring and these international students and people from different countries. Dear God, thank you so much for using this church, using the people in this church, just using us, Lord, to just spread your word and to form connections, deep connections that just are, go deeper than just friendships, but connections built with love with the people you have around us, around the globe. Please continue to support us. Please show us the way. Please prepare the hearts for you, Lord. And please just continue to guide us in everything that we do in our personal lives and in our connections with people from different cultures. Please, as a, let, us, please let us have humility. Please let us be kind and forgiving. Please let us just give, continue to give our time, our heart, and our story, and our testimony to these people that you've set before us. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. 
Now I'd like to introduce uh, Johnny. For those of you who don't know, he's the worship director here, and uh, he'd like to pray for Israel. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you for praying for Israel. Thank you for rem remembering to just put it in our minds and our forefront of our thoughts. 
Um, this is a bit of a interesting transition, but now I'd like to just talk about the numerous ways to give and then pray for the offering. So you can give in person. You can scan the QR code that appears after this if you um, use PayPal. You can also give online at rohchurch.com slash give. You can also text 84321, and you can also mail a check to 3300 University Avenue, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55414. And with that, I'd like to pray for the offering. Dear Father God, thank you for this building. Thank you for everything that we've been able to do with it. God, but we know this is only possible through you, not just through the financial help that you give us, but through the Holy Spirit, through the guidance that you continue to bestow to all of us, through, through your personal interactions in all of our lives. God, we are so thankful for that. We pray that you just never leave our side, God. We pray that you continue to love and support us in every way that we need, Lord. Please, God, just help us with our finances. Please help just give us everything we need and please help us do everything that we need to do with what we have. Please continue to help us steward this property and this gift that you gave to us through you, Lord. Please help us just be guided by your spirit and your love. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And now I'd like to introduce a speaker for today, a good friend of mine, Jeremy. And um, I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Oh, man. Thank you, bro. All right. It's been a long time since I've been up here, and they enlisted me to defend the men because of last week's messages. No, no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. Um, I won't be defending the men, but uh, I've been tasked with talking about John 20, and I am going to talk about verses 1 through 18. So. I'm just going to say a prayer quick, and then we'll go into the message and uh, share the things that the Lord has put on my heart. So, Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to share your word, for the opportunity to share what you've spoken to me. May the things that I say today um, be by your leading, and may you help the people to Remember the things that you want them to remember, and if I say anything that uh, is not good or you don't, you don't want them to remember God, uh, blot it from their memory. Um, I come before you humbly, and we all come here to receive of your hand and of your goodness. I pray this in the holy name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And for those online, we had to mute that because of security reasons, but I think you can hear me now, so we're all good. <laughs> okay. So I'll start by reading um, the first three verses of John 20, and it's on your handout as well if you want to follow along. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already removed from the tomb. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple left, and they were going to the tomb. So when I read those first four verses, the first thing that came to my mind was, why was it that Peter and John were together? And what came to my mind was, those were the two that seen Jesus be crucified. The others ran away, and they escaped, and we know what happened to Peter. Um, different people were coming up to him, asking him if he had been one of the ones that was with Jesus. And he denied him three times. And when Jesus looked at him, we've seen the heartbreak. We've seen the disappointment, that adversity. And I've been in that place before. Who here has had some adver adversity? I think we can all say we've had adversity in our life, right? And I suspect I could be wrong. I'm just that he happened to be with John because John was also there. John might have saw him and saw his reaction, and he was being a brother to him. And that's the point that I got was having a friend in time of trouble and adversity. When we're going through a lot of issues or disappointments, I've been that person where 
I try to solve my own problems. I try to do it by myself. And I don't go to people for help. And that's a very dangerous thing to do. I think that if Judas would have maybe sought some help, he probably would have been able to have been restored. But I think he dealt with that guilt by himself, and we've seen he ended up committing suicide. When I've been going through my troubles or my issues, when I've had different people reach out to me or support me or be there to give me a prayer or a word of encouragement, it's helped me through. And I think that was what John was doing for Peter at such an early time in the morning because they didn't naturally live together. But I suffice to say that I think as a church, especially in our times, that we should be devoted to one another, that we should be ready to be our brother or our sister's keeper. It's that unity and that love that makes us united. And as we see in Proverbs 17, 17, it says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. We know that life is not easy, and this walk of faith is not easy. And I think that's why Jesus has us all around each other. That's why we're part of this community. We can be in a lot of different places, but we come and we commune every Sunday together, worship together, eat meals together, and we grow together. So carrying along in the verses, the two were running together, and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. And he stooped to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there. However, he did not go in. So Simon Peter also came following him, and he entered the tomb, and he looked at the linen wrappings lying there. And the face cloth which had been on his head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but folded up in a place by itself. So the other disciple who had come first to the tomb also entered then, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he must arise from the dead. So the disciples went away again to their own homes. So picture that scene. Mary comes, knocks the door and says, hey, they stole our Messiah. His body's gone. And the two leave the house running. Probably a whole bunch of thoughts going through their mind. Wait, who stole him? Who took him? Is he really not there? Did somebody, is somebody trying to like ruin our Savior's body? Fear, worry, doubt, all kinds of things are going through their mind. Adrenaline's pumping. And we've seen that it says that they didn't know the scripture. The ladies went there in the morning to go and anoint Jesus' body. But nobody went to the tomb with the expectation that he was going to rise again. If they would have had that expectation, they would probably would have been there waiting. They probably wouldn't have been fearful or afraid. They probably would have been confident, trusting that, hey, our Savior has overcame the grave. It's interesting, again, that this verse also shows that God is always one step ahead. He's always one step ahead. We heard last week that the testimony of women weren't regarded as highly in that society during that time. And according to the Mosaic law, you needed two witnesses to confirm a truth or to confirm a testimony. Again, we see the sovereign hand of God. He had those two go to the tomb together to be those witnesses. Because we had seen from last week's verses that they had bribed the guards to say his friends came and stole the body. And in order to combat that lie, you would have needed two witnesses. And John and Peter saw the tomb removed. They saw the bandages perfectly still in place, one wrapped up in the body of, in the form of Jesus' body, and the head wrapping laid perfectly aside. And that comforts my heart because 
knowing that God is always one step ahead just gives me this peace. Like, I can go through anything, but if I trust in God, he's always one step ahead. I also found it a little interesting that John beat Peter to the tomb, but he waited for Peter to get there before going in himself. And Peter went in, saw the bandages, saw the area, and it said that after that, John went in, but John was the one that believed. I think it's in the, at the end of Luke, it said that Peter went home wondering or thinking about the situation. So as we are in this series of the events leading up to Pentecost, I think we're starting to realize the importance of the Holy Spirit. Because as we will, I don't want to go too far ahead, as we'll see in coming sermon series, we'll see the, the, what the Holy Spirit does for us and how the Holy Spirit opened up more truths. And thank God that he um, provided us that Holy Spirit. So in this time, I want to kind of contrast with Mary because she had went there early in the morning. And um, we see from Proverbs 8, 17, if I have that verse written somewhere. Yes, I got it. It says, I love those who love me, and those who diligent seek me will find me. And some verses or some renderings of that says, whoever seeks me in the morning will find me. In the sheet that I gave you guys, just take three minutes to read that second page that I'm writing from Bishop Rao before I go into the next part um, of my sermon. So I'll give you guys about two or three minutes to read that, and then I'll continue. All right, did everybody get through? Yeah. All right. Now, I'm not trying to say that the disciples weren't as diligent as her, but it may seem like it. They looked in and they went about their life. But Mary, after she told them, she decided to return. And I think that devotion is very, very important, very important to the Lord. As I was preparing for the sermon, Nelson was cleaning, and we just happened to start talking about being devoted to the Lord, and I was like, oh, all right, well, maybe this is what I'm supposed to be talking about. And we're always trying to find that magic formula, like, okay, we read about different people of the faith that, that's done a lot of amazing works, and you'll hear about some people praying for four hours in a day or three hours in a day or they got about six o'clock in the morning. And I think the conclusion that me and Nelson came to was there's a lot of different things going on in a lot of people's lives. Me and him are not married yet. We don't have kids. He has two jobs. I have like five jobs, but <laughs> you know, we're all at different places in life. And I don't think there's, there's this perfect formula like, okay, you have to get up at 5 a.m. every single day or you have to pray 10 times. I think what the Lord wants is a heart that's devoted to him with intentionality. 
with sincerity. Because I can go pray for four hours and be all over the place. But if I give the Lord an hour of time that's devoted, of sincere, of just sometimes quietness, crying, he can do something in that time. And I don't think we have to beat up ourselves to find this perfect way. I think it's just the desire in the heart to stay devoted to him. And look what happened to her. It was an honor and a privilege to be one of the first people to see our Redeemer, especially as a woman. They were disregarded and cast out to the side in their society. But as we've seen throughout Jesus' ministry, he always showed a high regard for women, that they were valued, that they were important. And we see a lot of the stories with the women where they were very devoted to him, from the lady that anointed him to Mary Magdalene, so forth and so on. And it's easy to wake up in the morning or go through our, our, throughout our days and pay attention to text messages, social media, and things of that sort. But I just want to reiterate the point that if we continually and diligently seek the Lord, we will find them. And that will be a blessing. And that will be good for our souls, nourishment for our souls. As I continue on in the verses, but Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. So as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been laying or lying. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they put him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and yet she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Thinking that he was the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you put him, and I will take him away. And as I read these verses, the thing that came to my heart was, the Lord Jesus will comfort us, in our sadness. As we can see that Mary was outside the tomb and she was weeping. She was so focused in her sadness that she didn't even realize that she was talking to the angels. And as we've seen in different parts of the Bible, when people see the angels, they know. They realize some people faint, some people get scared. They know they're talking to angels. But she was so focused in her sadness that she didn't even know. Her devotion drove her back to that tomb. And the reason why she was crying was because she didn't know where the Lord was. Jesus said in John 14, 1, he said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. In the same way, Jesus doesn't leave us in this world alone. He's our comforter. We have all kind of reasons to be sad. Just this past week, I was, I'm a property manager, and there was a dead body in the apartment building. And a resident came to me the day before and he said, hey, I heard this guy and his wife arguing. And an hour or two later, I heard a loud thump. He said, I don't know what's going on, but I smell something funny. Maybe it's old trash. I haven't seen him around. And I was like, uh-oh. I'm like, I hope that he's not dead. I hope that it's just bad trash, and he's somewhere around here. Maybe you guys have just missed each other. I had called the maintenance worker, but he had left for the day. And... Um, I said, okay, I'm coming back the next day, even though I wasn't supposed to work, but my main manager is gone, so I had to work that morning. And uh, mind you, this is on Thursday. He heard the arguing and the fighting on Wednesday. Um, so Friday morning, I get to work, and the maintenance worker's panicking, 
he's calling the police, and I'm like, oh no, oh no. So the firefighters come first, we go up to the third floor, and um, it, was a sm it was a smell, but I don't think it really hit me the way it really hit me once. Um, the coroner came. So the coroner came, they did their thing, and then they rolled the body uh, through the building and out the front door. And uh, the lady handed me the key and she was like, is there anything I can do to help you? And I was like, uh, no, this is just my first time. And when she handed me the key and um, I took it, I just started to cry a little bit. And I had to pray in that moment because this gentleman was the guy that had been living in our apartment for three months, two or three months. And uh, when he first came, our other manager was helping him and me and him had a conversation. And she just disappeared and it was just me and him. And somehow, some way, I just shared with him. I was like, hey, you know, I see you're going through a lot or you've been through a lot. The things that have helped me has been the Lord Jesus. If I didn't have Jesus in my life, I don't know what I would do. He's the one that's gotten me through so much. And he's like, yeah, man. I thank God, too, because there was a time where I had a health crisis, and my, fiance, my wife at that time was bringing in different men in front of me, in front of my kids. She thought that I was going to die, so she just started mistreating me. But it was because of God that I got through that situation. And I was like, oh, man, praise God. So after I'd seen that it was that gentleman, and they left, it just hit me. And I was like, wow, God really has me here for a reason. You know, some of these people are going through so much. Drug addiction, mental illness, all kind of different things. But he has me there to be a light. And it's sad. It's really, really sad to see people living in these circumstances. But I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for him in that moment. Because after I grabbed the key and I walked into the hallway, that smell is etched in my brain. I kid you not, it smells like rotten eggs and rotten milk mixed together. It was just, it's putrid. So the fact that Mary, in the midst of her sadness, was even willing to move the body of Jesus, still wanting to anoint his body with spices, I understand why. But if it wasn't for love, she probably wouldn't have went back. Because that gentleman was in that, in that room. And I, I'm not lying to you. I couldn't go into that room. But now, if that was my mother, if that was somebody that I truly loved, I would have went into that room. I would have embraced it. But I felt myself like, oh, well, I'll let the people handle it. I'll let them take care of it, which is the right thing to do. But... I'm just saying that just to give that picture. And could you imagine what life would be like if we didn't have Jesus as our comfort? If we didn't have Jesus by our side, if we didn't have the Holy Spirit, could you imagine what we would do in times of sadness, in times of hardship? Lord, have mercy. Because to me, it would be miserable. But glory be to God because he provided us his Holy Spirit so that he could be with us at all times. Because if Jesus would have just stayed in the body, he, would just, he wouldn't be able to be everywhere at all times. But now that we have his Holy Spirit, he's with us everywhere we go 24-7. And he will be the one to comfort us in times of sadness. And I'll carry on. I'm almost done. In verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Some translations say master. And that spoke to me. Because Jesus knows all of us by name. He knows you, Asha. He knows you, Miss Don. He knows you, Amy. He knows you, Miss Beth. He knows you, Nelson. He knows you, Johnny. He knows all of us by name. And he cares about us more than 
anybody can ever care about us. He knows the amount of hairs that are on our heads. He probably knows how many times our hearts beat in one day. That level of detail, that level of care is how much the Lord cares about us. And you see in the beginning, he called her woman. But when he said Mary, when she heard his voice, she knew it was Jesus. And what came to my heart was how we know Jesus will determine how we respond to him. If we just regard him as the guy from that book, we'll take him lightly. If we just think that he's some prophet, we'll take him lightly. But if we know him as Redeemer, the one who delivered us out of Satan's grips, the one who knew you before you entered the world, before you entered into your mother's womb, your helper, your support, your savior, we will regard him as such, and you will be devoted to him like no other. It was our sins that put him on that cross, but it was his love for us that made him overcome and made him rise and made him say, I will give you guys new life. I'll make you a new creation. And then John 10, 3, it says, To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep listen to his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. As we stay devoted to him, we learn and know his voice. And we want to stay devoted to him because, like I said, he cares about us the most. And we have all to be thankful for because we have our Redeemer. So to finish up, in verses 17 through 18, it says, Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am, sending, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he said these things to her. So the last point I want to finish with is that we should cling to Jesus by the way of the Spirit and the truth. Because of the Holy Spirit, now we have access to God because Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and he's interceding on our behalf. That's a whole lot of stuff packed into one that could be a whole sermon on itself. But I just want to say that with the access that we have to God and by his spirit, let us cling to him. Let us keep staying in his truth and knowing his word. Reading the Bible, reading scripture, because usually the truths of the word will be confirmed by the spirit together. And as we read the truth of the Bible, the Holy Spirit will, be, will confirm it in our hearts and it will become real to us. And if we just leave our Bibles on the shelf, then we'll tend to get dry and then we'll start to believe the truths of the world, of social media, of whatever else can come and interfere with that. And also, I think an important thing to highlight here is as we cling to God through the spirit and truth, we'll begin to hear God speak to us. And I think when you hear God speak to you, that you should share those messages. I was just at the prepare banquet this past Friday and a girl and her husband came up to me and she's like, hey, are you leaving? And I'm like, uh, I'm out to leave. She's like, I really want to tell you something. And she gave me a message and then she said, are you going to preach soon? And I was like, yes, I am. Actually on Sunday. And she was like, Oh, yes, okay, that confirms it for me. I'm really glad that I was, I stood out in faith, and I'm glad she stood out in faith, too, because what she said to me, it touched my heart. And you never know those words that God might be giving you for a person or an individual 
might be something that might change their life. It might be just that word of encouragement that they need. Or maybe it might be that rebuke to let them know that, hey, you got to cut that out of your life. And I've had that myself where somebody didn't know something about me and they were like, I see this vision of you. And I was like, oh, my God, Lord, you caught me red handed. <laughs> so I think especially in our days, in our times, we should be ready and quick to listen to what the Lord has to say. So that is all I have. Um, during this time, I want to give you guys about five minutes. It's 11.45. About five minutes. I have some questions that I wrote in your handouts. And if people want to come and share, hopefully we'll have enough time to do that. A word, a prophetic word, or a psalm, or a scripture, or something that they read from these verses that stood out to them. I want to give people the opportunity to be able to do that, and then we'll go into our last worship song. Thank you, guys.
As you are in your discussion, if you do have a request of a song, um, a closing praise and worship song, uh, you can come up and, and let me know. Okay. Also, I have some homework for you guys. Um, in verses 12, it said, and she saw the two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been lying. I want you to go home and do some research and see how Jesus connects to the mercy seat or how Jesus is the mercy seat of God. Because that's a really unique passage there because a lot of times in the Bible, we don't see angels sitting. But the fact that they were sitting, I think it's a very, very important part of scripture. So look up the mercy seat of God and see how Jesus connects to the mercy seat of God. Okay, now here's an opportunity for anybody to come up. We got a few minutes here to, again, either share something that stood out to them in the verses or if, it, if these verses brought a scripture to your mind or if you just wanna share something to bless the congregation, the mic is open. Test, 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 test. Just get a little closer. Um, in the morning when I walk that says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I was thinking, uh, what what actually stood out in that verse is the life. And I was thinking, what life can we have without Jesus? Is there a life? And what is this meaning of life? We can have all things in the world and all the monies, all the luxury, but that is not life. The real life is in Jesus Christ. And when I was single, I thought that when I'm hurting and in trouble and I have someone like a husband, he'll be able to help me feel feel get rid of that pain but when i got married i realized that's a lie the only true comfort is in jesus christ and um i went through a lot of things in my life it, it, through marriage life and it was really hurting that even my husband could not comfort me i could not feel that peace and that, that's when I realized that Jesus is the only giver of peace. Don't be deceived that when I get married, if you're young, that all problems will go away. If you don't have Jesus Christ, this life is very hard. But when you have Jesus Christ, he helps, he helps you in many situations that human being and physical things cannot get you there. Amen. Does anybody else? <laughs> All right. Do you have a song, Johnny? Is there a song on anybody's heart? Well, I'll just pray to close, and you just go where, where the Lord leads you. Amen. Come say it in the mic. I'll give you a hard time. We, we, can, we can do that one. Okay. Well. 
One second, Johnny. I had Pastor Lowell share this verse last week, and I wanted to share it again. I think it's just something that we should keep. I don't know, just, it's just on my heart, and it just keeps coming back and back again. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So, Lord, we just thank you that as we go through this life, that you're right by our side, that you're with us, that you're with us through the pain, the trials, the disappointments, and you care about us so much that you took upon our sins, you took the punishment that we deserved, and you bore it on yourself and you overcame so that we can live with you for eternity so that we can have a way to have salvation so Lord I just pray that you'll continue to hold us that you'll continue to help us endure that you'll help us to stay devoted to you God thank you for the reminders that are in your scripture throughout and Father you see us in the places that we're growing weak, in the places that we're growing tired, in the places that we might just be going through the motions. And Father, I just ask you to refill us with your spirit, to renew us, Lord, to restore that hope, to give us the energy and the focus back to you. May we keep our eyes on you, Jesus. And may it stay there forevermore. I pray this and ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and let's stand and let's just sing this out again. How great is our God.
Well, thank you, Jeremy. Um, good word. And what, what touched me is that Peter and John <clears throat> were together. And um, sometimes we forget how recent it was when Peter denied Jesus. That was like Friday. And this was Sunday morning. It was not very long. And you need a friend <clears throat> when you've blown it and they can help you find forgiveness in Jesus. So thanks, Jeremy, for that good word. That's a good word. Yeah. So let's receive the benediction, and then let's go and bless the city that is hurting. Um, death and dying and hardship and so on is all around us, and we want the city to know Jesus. So may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. In the name of Jesus. Let's turn around and bless that city, okay? Twin cities. Twin cities. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And we want you to know. And we want you to know. When life is hard. Life is hard. Jesus is there. Jesus is there. And we want you to know him. And we want you to know him. And walk with him. And depend upon him. And depend upon him. To the glory of Jesus. To the glory of Jesus. Amen. 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 Love each other well over lunch and enjoy time together. <laughs>